Welcome, everybody. Can you all see my screen just to make sure? Yeah. Hi, Sonia. Welcome, everybody. We have a lot of people joining and filtering into the room. Um, but as you uh, are here and getting settled, if you don't mind entering your name and saying hello and where you're coming from today in the chat. Yeah. Thanks for kicking us off, Amy. Hmm. 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 Yeah, a little announcement that we've allowed cameras and microphones for everyone since we hope to have some conversations. So I just want to ask everyone to please be on mute um, unless you're um, consciously speaking <laughs> to us in the meeting. Thank you. Great. Well, I think um, the meeting entrance has slowed down a bit so we can get started. Um, Welcome everybody. Thanks so much for being here today. This is our quarterly homeownership partner meeting and we've got a packed agenda today. I'm Talia Khan Cravis. I'm the Assistant Director of Homeownership Programs here at OHCS. Um, and I uh, am joined by a lot of my colleagues who will be stepping in and sharing updates today. Um, and uh, I use she, her pronouns. And we can go to the next slide. Uh, I think some of you have already started doing this, but uh, please, uh, we're hoping for interaction today and discussion at the end of some of our updates. Uh, but you can start off by just telling us uh, your name and where you're coming from and affiliation in the chat as you join. Um, I know many of you know each other and some of you are new here. Actually, if you want to do a, we used to do this and I think this practice has fallen off a bit, but if you're new to this meeting, will you uh, raise your hand in the, uh, using the hand raise function? Be great to see who's new and who the old timers are. Great, welcome Adina. Welcome Matt, her, one of our staff. <laughs> Um, okay, I think I'm not seeing everybody that welcome Adrian. Great. Well, I'm so glad that everybody's here and I will get started with just a little housekeeping. Uh, just so you know, this meeting is being recorded and we post the slides and recording to our website afterwards. Um, I can put the link to where we post it later. Um, Again, we want this to be a two-way or multi-way conversation. Um, so enter questions, comments in the chat at any time. Um, feel free to raise your hand. We'll have a specific <coughs> time for discussion. Um, and then if you could stay on mute when you're not speaking, just because there's a lot of us in this virtual room and it gets loud if you're not on mute. Um, great, and so the agenda for today, uh, are we're gonna share some program updates. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about funding opportunities. We'll also have an update from uh, government relations on our um, agency request budget process and just uh, follow up on uh, the 2024 legislative session. Uh, then we'll have a discussion about how we can make this time a little more meaningful together. We'll have time for you all to share any updates uh, with your programs. 
uh, share some engage engagement opportunities coming on the pike through OHCS, and then we'll close out for the day. Um, so I will now hand it over to uh, Jessica McKinnon, our senior homeownership development program analyst, to share some updates related to our homeownership development programs. Great, thank you so much, Talia, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I won't introduce myself since Talia did such a great job introducing me. Um, I do use she, her pronouns, though. Um, I wanted to start homeownership developments update with the state of the NOFA. So last month, Housing Stability Council awarded 10 projects, over $19 million in Lyft and $3.5 million in Lyft Supplemental. We're recommending two new projects to Housing Stability Council tomorrow, and our full ask will include over 6 million Lyft and 1 million Lyft Supplemental. All of these projects will bring over 200 new affordable homes across Oregon, and we're very happy to be able to support such an exciting number of new homes for Oregonians. Um, but that's not all. We do still have funding available. The chart on the slide shows all of the numbers. Um, we've received two additional applications that we plan to take to Housing Stability Council in August. If these applications are approved as they were submitted, it'll mean that we have used the last of our lift supplemental funding, but we do still have, or we will still have, almost 10 million in lift funding still available for application. Uh, moving to the right half of the slide, we do have some upcoming partner meetings. On June 11th and 13th, we'll have our new partner welcome and Procorum training. This will be for recipients of new awards this year. So if you've received your award uh, last month or hopefully tomorrow, I highly recommend you attend these trainings. Uh, June 18th will be a new forms training for all of our partners who have active awards with us. July 9th will be our next quarterly homeownership development partner call. Uh, the link to register will be later in this presentation, but I'll also post the link in the chat. Um, you can also expect a technical advisory to go out a little later this month. Uh, finally, just a reminder that September 2nd will be the last day that we can accept NOFA applications. So if you're interested in applying, please make sure that you're ready to get everything in by then. Um, finally, I wanted to offer one last exciting update. During the 2023 legislative session, we were, giving, we were given funding to hire a staff member whose role would be to essentially figure out how OAHTC or the tax credits typically used for rental housing could be used for limited equity co-ops. I'm excited to announce that Tasha Worth has joined our team this um, just this week to get started on that work. She'll also probably work with us in the homeownership development program um, on other programs. So I'm sure that she'll become a familiar face to everyone. Um, but I'll stop talking and I'll let Tasha introduce herself uh, before we hand things over to the next speaker. Hello everyone, my name is Tasha Worth and I use she, her pronouns. I have over 25 years of experience in the real estate industry, 10 of which was spent assisting homeowners and investors defer their capital gains taxes when selling their investment properties to build wealth. And now I'm really excited to be in the homeownership development section, so that way I can assist developers and lenders to obtain state tax credit for Oregonians, um, so that Oregonians can have access to affordable homeownership opportunities. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Back to you, Jessica. Thanks, sorry, just a quick interjection. If someone is not on mute, if everybody could just check that they're on mute. I did mute someone, <laughs> um, but I'm still hearing like some paper rustling noises. So just double check yourself. <laughs> Thank you. That's a lot better. It already sounds more Apologies. Quiet. It's also very hard to listen to Tasha. I don't know if any other people are experiencing the same. Yeah, uh, Tasha's having a little bit of uh, speaker issues, and I think I even might be frozen now too. So hopefully you can hear me. Oh, sorry, just to jump in. Um... We're done with the homeownership program, so we can uh, move on to the next slide. And thank you. Great to see everyone today.
Yeah, and just in case, I think that Talia may be frozen too. So um, Alicia is going to help um, sharing about the whole veteran funding. So Alicia, um, it's you. Thank you, Magda. Um, just wanted to share updated information about the HOPE Veteran Funding. We made some uh, program changes for our upcoming RFA for the Restore Health and Safety Program. We removed um, percentages of funding that was set aside for down payment assistance and funding for health and safety repairs. We combined it to one pool so we can offer an RFA with one funding amount for veteran funding and allow each uh, partner to determine what works best in their community, whether they need funding for down payment assistance or if they need funds for health and safety repairs for their community. So that's one big change that we made. Um, the second is changing the down payment assistance piece for veterans only. We're, we removed the maximum 20%, the household maximum stands at 60,000 if it's a first generation home buyer and 30,000 for a first time home buyer, and then allowing uh, our partnering agencies to offer 10% of their awarded DPA amount, an additional 10% amount for lender required repairs at, at the time of closing. In addition, the final change for down payment uh, for veterans funding is to allow our uh, partners that are offering this funding in this upcoming RFA, by the way, anyone that has current uh, veteran funding, this does not apply. So I just want to make that clear. But um, any of our organizations that receive this upcoming funding for down payment assistance for veterans, um, anything over 10,000, they can just determine what best for their community by offering either a five-year forgivable loan, or they can offer it as a grant to the veteran um, home buyer. So these are the changes that were approved at, in our uh, council meeting in March. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, and I know we're going to have you also sharing. Um, I don't know if you want to share next, but we have also um, just some reminders of current funding opportunities from our division. Um, so Alicia, if you want to share about the Hope Restore Health and Safety Program, and then I can share about the other grant. OK. Sure. Um, so we will be offering, um, we're, ex we're working with procurement currently for the health and safety repair program. We'll have general population funding as well as the veteran funding. Veteran funding can be used for health and safety repairs or down payment assistance. And we anticipate that that should be open sometime early fall. Awesome, thank you. Um, and I will share about the language access and community engagement and outreach or outreach and engagement grant that is currently open um, accepting applications. These grants will be up to $70,000 to hear um, organizations that delivers home ownership programs with any expenses related to language access, like updating websites, translate, translating materials, providing interpretation, and also um, strengthening their community outreach and engagement. Um, the initial closing date for this solicitation was Friday of this week, so tomorrow, the 7th, but we have extended it for one more week. So we will be receiving applications through Friday of next week at 4 p.m. Um, for any questions related to the application or the process, you can email Amanda King. She's our procurement specialist, and her email address is right there on the screen for you. Um, I'm also going to share in the chat our um, link to sign up for emails and news for OHCS so that you can find out about additional opportunities when they come up. Okay, and I think Talia is back um, also. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, I got yeah. kicked off in the middle of the meeting. Great. So next, we'll pass it over to Alexandra Ring, our government relations specialist. Hi, folks. I've just got a couple of updates for you. So regarding 2024 session implementation, the kind of most relevant item to our partners here in home ownership. It's on the development side, so SB 1537. We are currently in the very, very early stages of implementation on that one, and more updates will be available kind of in early fall, September, October-ish later this year. 
Um, and then on the agency request budget front, thank you for all those who showed up to our engagement earlier this month. Thank you to all those who have filled out the survey. We are still kind of crunching all of the numbers, figurative numbers from that. Um, we're really thankful for all the feedback. We will be doing a little bit of an overview of most of the feedback that we receive tomorrow at Housing Stability Council, so please do tune in for that. And then we'll have more next steps and things like that coming soon. And I might be frozen, but that's you're not I frozen. Oh, I'm Great. frozen. I realize we've cruised through some of these updates, so I just wanted to pause. I see Sarah asked a question about restore health and safety, um, and that the general population funds are only for safety repairs, whereas the veterans funds are for um, both uh, DPA and repairs. Um, are there any other questions about um, the homeownership development updates, the restore health and safety updates, or anything that Alexandra just mentioned? Feel free to come off mute if anybody has a question at this point. I'll pause for another minute. That was in a full minute, but we can keep going. Uh, I'll pass it over to Magda for discussion. Awesome, thank you. Um, so we wanted to have some time in this meeting to have a conversation with you on Touchbase. We have these quarterly meetings four times a year, um, and we wanted to make some time to get some feedback from you and just hear your thoughts about how we may make these calls more effective for you and more engaging. Um, just wanted to touch base and make sure that we are meeting the expectations, providing helpful information and creating a space to to really collaborate. Um, so I'm here with Emily Arnold. Um, Emily, I don't know if you want to do a quick introduction, but we've prepared um, some polls and a easy retro board um, to to collect some of your thoughts. So I will explain how that would work, but I wanted to for you to meet Emily if you haven't met and um, since she's going to help facilitating. So. Yeah, hi everyone. My name's Emily Arnold and I'm a new community engagement specialist specifically assigned to home ownership division. So I'm excited to get to work with you all and um, yeah, I can go ahead and share the polls. Thank you. So we're going to start with some polls, just kind of to take the polls um, and get some quick, um, like a snapshot or some of um, the perceptions. So I, I think I hear someone not muted. If you can please um, double check that you're muted. And to access the polls, um, I think if you go to the top of your screen, you should see an icon that says polls. You should see the poll questions there and you should be able to start answering the questions. Um, the first question that we have there is how would you rate this meeting? And you can give these meetings uh, anywhere from one to five stars, depending on how you feel. So please feel free to access the poll um, and, and start voting. Magda, I don't know if this is just on my end. I see the icons that you mentioned. In fact, on my screen, two icons are showing up, but neither of them says that they have polls yet. I don't know if it's ah, okay. just my screen not loading or if that's happening to Same others as well. Okay. I have a poll, but it won't let me actually click on anything. Oh, okay, let me see. I'm the same as Sonia. I don't see anything in the poll that says the organizer okay. will add some later. This is terrible. Okay, let me see. Um, let me see if we can. But you, you all can see the questions. You can just not vote. Is that what I'm hearing? 
Yeah, I can see the questions, but I can't vote. Mm, I don't I see questions. See. I cannot. Um, I don't see the morning. questions. You don't see questions. No. Hey, Magda, maybe we could just move to the um, the yeah. discussion questions. Yeah, let's do that because um, I think it's going to be. Oh, let me try this really fast. If I. Um, yeah, I think it may take me more than a couple seconds to <laughs> to do this. So uh, why don't we um, then use the the easy retro board? Um, I can still, I, I think the questions that we have there kind of follow the same spirit. Um, so we have a link to the board in the chat, and I don't know if most of you may have used this. What this is, is a link to a blank page where we've put a couple questions. And if you go to that link, you can answer um, any of the questions uh, by clicking the plus sign. You can add your answer. So. <clears throat> You can do that. I think I'm going to share that in my screen as a second in a second. But um, just so you know, I'm going to read you the questions and feel free to start adding your thoughts. Um, it can be anonymous. The first question is, how can we make the partner calls more effective and engaging in the future? What is the most useful part of these meetings? What topics would you like to have included in the meeting? Um, how can we make the meetings more collaborative and or incorporate better your voice and perspective? And then any other thoughts or questions that you have for us. Um, so we're going to take a couple minutes for you to start um, entering your answers. I see some of you there. Um, and while you do that, I'm going to um, also share the board on, on my screen. So it's one second. Thank you for answering. Awesome. And while we um, answer there, I'm just going to read some of um, the answers to the first question. And I also want to invite anyone that wants to come off mute and share your thoughts uh, to please do so. We would love to hear you too. Um, so for the first question, how can we make the partner calls more effective and engaging in the future? Um, so we could, a recommendation is to share the agenda and documents ahead of time. Um, that's a good point. We also have sharing success and challenges that partners are having with the work and grants. Background information on the funding opportunities would be helpful for those partners who may be newer to the different programs. Yes, thank you. Um, does anyone want to comment or effort, offer any thoughts on that first question? Additional thoughts. Okay, um, I'm going to move to share about the second question. What is the most useful part of these meetings? We have the program updates and information about upcoming grants, funding updates and upcoming opportunities. That's good. Funding and NOFA updates again. Um, people from the specific programs um, involved and their updates. Um, updates and programs, information about funding opportunities and the processes that grantees may need to follow, updates on funding, funding, um, information sharing in general, and funding again. I think that is a strong theme. Um, <clears throat> so also, again, if anybody wants to add anything to that column, please let us know. I'm seeing some great ideas about how, maybe I'm jumping ahead, but um, just to plant a seed, uh, I'm seeing some great ideas about highlighting different partners and 
um, if you feel like you want to volunteer to be spotlighted, spotlit at a next meeting, um, let us know. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to, um, oh yeah, I'm going to go to the third question there. It's uh, the topics that you would like to see included in the meeting. And we have um, more about homeownership resources and funding opportunities, best practices. That's a good one too. Success stories from current grants, shared policy deliberations, responses to challenge administering grants and goals. That's really good. Uh, program challenges and troubleshooting, best practices by some partners and case studies, and training for new members. That's good. I think um, some of those, um, like I have questions about how that would look like, or so if anybody that um, shared any of, of these answers would like to elaborate a little and just um, let us know a bit more about the recommendation, that would be really appreciated or added to the retro board. Okay, Jackie, I see your hand. Yeah, so um, something that's come up on the Housing Oregon Rural Policy Committee is that um, not everyone, for example, was included um, in the lift deliberations with DOJ and like senior staff and a lot of like rural areas were left out. And so you know, if this call could, for example, share about what's been co conversing at that because it puts a lot of pressure on us as the policy chairs to, to like play that game of telephone. So I think that kind of thing. And if there are other group meetings like that to kind of give an update, so folks will come to this call for that update. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Jackie. Right. And not to um, force more meetings upon people, but um, if anybody from that group is interested in joining our uh, quarterly meeting specific to homeownership development, July the 8th or 9th, the date will be later in this PowerPoint, we will be sharing an update related to that during that more public call as well. So, but noted we could we can also bring those updates here at a high level way. Yeah, I, I know that um, some of the co-ops um, have really asked to be part of this conversation, so I don't know if they're on this call or not, but maybe extending it out to them would be great. Square one. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we have an additional uh, comment there of demographic, geographic reach. Who are we reaching and who is, be who is being missed with these funds? So um, thank you for that too, that thought. Um, I'm going to go to the next question is how can we make the meetings more collaborative and incorporate better the perspective of the community partners um, in the room? And so some recommendations are to highlight a partner during the call so that um, they can share their work with others and explore ways to collaborate. Um, have each partner have a moment so that they can share a best practice or challenge that they need to help with. That is also a great idea. Highlight a different region each time and their successes and challenges. I like that because there's a lot of a lot of us in the meeting, so I think that would be a really good way to go about it. Um, have topic specific conversations. One meeting is not enough to talk about all the programs, but if there is a rotation and we can go a bit deeper into one program, that could be helpful. Thank you. And have rural conversations. I imagine about rural issues in rural, or maybe we can all go to a rural location. I imagine it's more about like topics affecting rural communities. Um, and the last question is um, just any additional thoughts or questions that you may have. So um, someone's asking for a calendar of meetings for the rest of the year. We can share that. Um, I can put that in the chat in a minute. 
Um, Oregon Health Authority also has funding for health and safety repairs and applications are being reviewed now. It would be interesting to see how uh, or if OHA's Healthy Homes program may connect with Restore Health and Safety program. Um, can these resources be layered? It seems like a, a good question and we may be able to provide uh, some insight into that now. I'm not sure. Um, but if not, that we can definitely take that and, and try to answer later. Um, and then office hours are really helpful and provide a different type of communication format. Is it difficult for some of us to speak up? Yeah, it's difficult for some of us, including me, to speak up in a large group. So completely understand. And thank you for sharing that. Um, OK, I think uh, I mean, this is a lot of really good content, a lot of good ideas. Um, we this link that you have for the EC Retro board will continue to work. So um, if you had time and wanted to come back um, in a couple of days to add any additional thoughts, you can do that. We will like revisit this later on to see if we have any additional um, comments and we can also maybe revisit next meeting next quarter um, just with a summary and just to let you know kind of um, some steps and ideas that we have to put some of these into action. Um, also feel free to use the chat for the remaining of the meeting. Um, I'm going to try to move this from my screen now. And um, if you have additional thoughts or would like to have the opportunity to talk one on one, I would be glad to connect with you. Uh, so feel free to continue sending ideas or recommendations to my email, uh, magda.bejarano at hcs.oregon.gov. Um, and if you also want to talk one on one, I would be glad to be um, kind of that connection to to hear thoughts and um, discuss specific topics and go from there. Um, so if we don't have any, I guess I can give one last chance uh, for anybody to address this question, uh, provide feedback about our meetings before we go um, and move on to, to our next topic. Awesome. OK, well, thank you everyone for your participation. Um, and I think we're going to move to just updates about our upcoming engagement opportunities. And Talia, you'll guide that. Magda, do you want to share your screen again? Ah, yeah. Uh, so we just have a kind of a long list of um, upcoming ways uh, to engage with home ownership and events coming up. Uh, the first one here is tomorrow uh, for those that aren't familiar every month uh, we uh, our oversight body is the housing stability council and they convene uh, to for briefings on what's going on with the agency and then also for a formal approval process uh, so tomorrow's the next one and the next few dates are listed here and you can always sign up to to listen in um, we for home ownership are we'll be bringing forth uh, two uh, lift projects for approval or 2.5 lift projects for approval. Um, and the meeting packet is always posted a week before. So if you're one of those um, people that have submitted an application and you're on your um, on your toes wondering if you've been funded you can always learn a week uh, if we're recommending for you you for funding a week before we go to council to ask for approval of that recommendation and um we'll post the the website in the chat for that um and then during the meeting tomorrow we'll also be uh debriefing with council our uh agency request budget town hall process so many of you attended our town hall uh, and gave feedback on the agencies, the home ownership division specific investment requests. And so we'll be sharing a very high level recap of um, the feedback that we heard and asking for housing stability feedback as well. Um, I won't go into all the stuff on this list, 
but um, oh, sorry, one more thing about the Housing Stability Council. This the format has changed a bit. So when there's a decision item, uh, there is usually a public comment section right before the decision item. Um, for example, last month uh, we had 10 lift projects that we recommended to Housing Stability Council and uh, one of the developers that was um, part of that recommendation package came and, and gave testimony about how important the funding would be for uh, their community. And so that was just a really great chance to share what uh, kind of the on the ground perspective of what these projects look like to housing for Housing Stability Council to to shed light and better understand the impact of these projects, not coming from us, but from you. So just if you ever feel like giving public testimony for decision items, that option is there. And, and if you have any questions about that, um, let us know. Um, there's some uh, kind of regular meetings coming up with the manufactured housing section. Uh, one thing of note is that they're applying for a new federal grant called the Preservation and Reinvestment Initiative for Community Enhancement. Um, and so that they'll have a, a public comment process for that coming up on June 20th for people to give feedback on our proposal related to that grant. Um, Jessica already said this, but our July 9th homeownership development uh, quarterly partner meeting. Um, we'll talk about the Lyft Working Group. We'll talk about the upcoming or the 2025 NOFA and the process for planning that. And so if you are a homeownership uh, developer, please join us then. Um, our OHCS lending team is uh, presenting at Housing Stability Council next month about a new framework for our lending products. Um, and they're also out in the community presenting on our lending products. And then um, last but not least, you can join us again and see what your what feedback that you gave us today has been implemented <laughs> um, in September. So our next quarterly partner meeting, and we can also post, uh, I think the next one after that would be in December. Um, so we can post that date as well. But those are the events coming up. And now we'd love to hear what's happening with you and what events are coming up in your community and anything that you want to share with each other, with us. Um, Tara, I just wanted to add that I put in the chat the dates of the next four quarterly partner meetings so that you all have them, but you will you'll receive um, in our communications a heads up. Um, and yeah, if there's any anyone that wants to share any updates, um, any events that are coming up for you, um, any successes, anything that has been happening in the last quarter that you're excited about or anything upcoming, um, I think it'll be a great to to hear. Or sharing the chat also. Hi, yes. everybody. I'll share a couple of updates of things that are happening in Central Oregon. Um, one is in, in collaboration with all the affordable housing developers last uh, week or the week after, before on May 30th, we hold a affordable homeownership fair and it was uh, very successful. It was in Redmond. We had a lot, lots of people coming and hearing about all the pipeline of affordable housing that is coming to Central Oregon. And Neighbor Impact uh, was talking about how you start your journey towards homeownership. We had lenders in the space. And it was a really a great event. And we have, uh, we are scheduling to do one in exclusively in Spanish on July 24th uh, in Bend in partnership with the Latino Community Association and the same group of developers. Um, so looking forward to that. And then um, hopefully we'll do it again in September uh, in City of Bend. And this is our second year trying to do some of those engagements and we're improving them uh, each time. Like this last time, for example, we had live translation and we didn't know if anybody was actually going to need it or not. And we had a number of uh, participants using our live translation system. So exciting on that. Um, and the other thing I want to celebrate is as part of um, Homeownership Month, which is uh, this month, 
we um, hosted a um, peer conversation um, this earlier this week and where we had some lenders come and talk very specific about some products um, that they were offering and they they featured the flex lending as one of them for example really this was we had about I think 18 partners that work in um, in the housing space in the region or other forms of asset building uh, come and do a little bit of networking and getting to hear an update straight from the lenders uh, on what products they have today for first time home buyers independently of their income. So super, super happy to have been able to be part of those. Awesome, very exciting. Thank you. I can share. Hi. Hello, everybody. This is Gabriela from Hacienda CDC here in Portland, Oregon. Um, I would like to share that we have also our Latino Home Fair coming up on September 21st, 2024. Um, it's going to be a, a community fair with a lot of resources for home ownership. It's going to take place in Gresham in Rockwood. We're trying to uh, get to know more of the community in that in that um, area and to partner more, more also with other organizations over there. Um, so we'll invite you all. Hopefully you can join us. It's going to be a, an event mainly in Spanish uh, with the participation of the realtors and lenders partners that we usually work with, um, the community in general, and um, yeah, we, we will be teaching a lot about um, the path for home ownership. So, um, yeah, we hope it's going to be a fun, colorful, and, and really uh, interesting event for the community. Awesome. Thank you, Gabriela. I'd love to maybe join. And um, I also see Kevin. Hey, everybody. Uh, Kevin Cronin here from Housing Oregon. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that we have our conference coming up September 24th and 25th. Um, so save the date. Um, we are looking for folks that are that want to present on uh, a topic. And I think that um, there's a lot of cool things happening in home ownership. So I really wanted to encourage folks from this group to um, bring their best ideas and submit them to do a workshop at the conference. Um, additionally, I wanted to encourage you to nominate your project um, for a, an award. Um, every year we give out the golden keys, um, which recognize the best new home ownership development in the state. So please um, nominate your project or somebody's project that you really um look to as uh, as something that we all should be striving for so i wanted to put that out there last year we gave um an award to a converted manufactured home park uh, to resident owned um, and had them give their workshop and that was really powerful um but uh would love to see what folks are doing uh these days i'm gonna put the link in the chat where you can access um all of those things thanks so much Awesome. That's great, Kevin. Thank you. So yeah, if you can, that's, and is that the link where you can volunteer for, to present at the conference and also nominate a project? Yeah, all, all of the things that you can access uh, from that web page, um, awesome. your proposal, your nominations and tickets. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Great. Um, anyone else wants to share, announce? Stephanie, I see your hand up. Thank you. Uh, I just want to introduce myself because this is the first time I'm joining and I will be joining mm -hmm. from now on. I started working for Thistle and Nest in January as Home Ownership Program Assistant. And I know some of you by Zoom calls or uh, other activities, but it's great to be part of this community. Thank you, that's all. Yeah, thank you for introducing yourself and it's great to meet you. Great to have you here.
Awesome. Well, I think uh, we've had a lot of really good information. Um, thank you for sharing your upcoming events and what you're working on. I think that just tells a really great story of all the work that is happening and the collective impact that we can have together. So thank you for just making that visible with your participation here today. Um, I think this takes us kind of to the end of the meeting. Uh, remember that that easy retro board continues to be open. If you want to keep adding thoughts or recommendations, you can also email me. Um, and tell you, is there anything else that we need to add before we go or or can we can we close it up? I think we're good. I'll just post the Housing Stability Council meeting link in the chat as well in case anybody wants to join tomorrow or in future meetings or see the packet. Um, and thank you so much everyone for joining today and sharing your ideas and to all the new people who've joined us. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time, if not sooner, probably sooner. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for all your work. Thank you.